right, everybody, and welcome to week five of our Trustworthy Online Bible Study. I know I have learned so much about many of the kings, and we'll recap them in week six video. But Joel, yeah. I want to talk to you about this week's king, Josiah. Yeah. So what is something that we can learn from Josiah? What and can we, we just say up? we are so proud of you Gosh, for yeah. you oh, pressing you guys, in you. to the pronunciation of the kings. <laughs> yeah. So I just didn't want that moment to pass. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. We'll see if I get it next week when I list them all. There all we right? go. Everyone <laughs> stay tuned for that if that's not enough for you to come back. That's for sure. <laughs> and right. it's okay if you mess up. Thanks, guys. You guys yeah. are very forgiving, which I appreciate. So Perfect. thank you. <laughs> All right, Joel, let's chat about Josiah. What can we learn? What are we expecting of? You know, um, Josiah is maybe, I feel like I say a lot of the kings are some of my favorite kings. Um, there's definitely a lot of them that I really don't like. Um, and Josiah is, is just, I don't know, he's just so unique and so special. Uh, and there's so much amazing things about what we're going to find out about this king. And one of the things why I personally can just relate to Josiah, and I'm just so grateful for him, is that he shows us what happens when you've been without something for a time, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, hmm. you see that thing, or you come across it, and you go, how did I live my whole life without this thing? You know, uh, and so you're like, Joel, that you sound like you're talking in all kinds of mystery here. And so I'll give a little bit like a special cookie. Like, Ooh, you know? <laughs> it's like you go to a party and somebody serves your cookie and you think that is the most delicious thing in the world. How have I lived my whole life without, without this, that cookie? Right? And yes. But his discovery is much better than a cookie. It's so much better. <laughs> so we'll find out that Josiah finds actually through some of the people that work for him, the book of the law. Um, and it's actually a bit of a tragedy because what Josiah teaches us is that God actually commanded that every king actually have the book of the law mm -hmm. on their nightstand at night. Oh, and wow. essentially, this is the way that I would think about it. I think that when they can't sleep, you know, when they're having a hard time, things are stressful. Babylonians are trying to take them oh, over. Yeah. Hey, here's some good reading material, the book of the law. And, and I think not only are they supposed to read it, but are they are they supposed to record, record it? Record it as and well, write it. like write word for word. Yes. And so okay. the book of the law, like when when God talks about how important it is that we take God's word and write it on the tablet of our heart, Hearts. so that it's not just something that is accessible to us, but it's something that's inside of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no better way to internalize God's word if you think about just the way the human mind is mm -hmm. structured. Mm -hmm. If you write it and you read it and you repeat it mm -hmm. and then you live it mm -hmm. and you internalize it, that's when your life starts to really line up with it. And I know we're going to say it at the end, but that's, that's right. That goes right along with what our desire is yeah. here is at Proverbs 31 Ministries. Know the truth, live the truth, because it changes everything. And I think we really see this principle lived out. But the fact that he found it means that he had gone a season without it without it yeah and so i think this is really profound yeah absolutely huh. and uh what's even more profound is that after he finds it what does he do with it he he actually begins to internalize it and we will find that he sets in action all of these things to restore the kingdom to look like what it was designed to look like because God was supposed to be their king the whole time. Mm -hmm. And Josiah is just an under king. Josiah is just a representation of, hey, here is the direction that we're supposed to go in. Um, and so Josiah is an amazing king. He teaches us so much about what it looks like. And probably my favorite thing that Josiah does is he reenacts or he reinstitutes the Passover. Okay. I mean, they had forgotten all about the story of uh, Egypt yeah. and being rescued and the, the Red Sea being part of all of that was forgotten. And Josiah, in the book of the law, reads, wow, oh, wow, there's actually this thing called the Passover that we're supposed to celebrate because what it's doing is it's shaping us, it's forming us. It's actually, Lisa, what you said, it's a cultivation of the heart um, and into becoming citizens of God's kingdom. And I always like to think about the way that God designed uh, the human body yeah. is our stomach is designed to remind us through the pangs of hunger that it's time to take on physical nourishment. 
And so God has this wonderful, complicated, intricate way that he designed our body yeah. because he gave us taste buds so that the taking in of physical nourishment uh, would be pleasing to us. He gave us hunger pains to remind us. You know, he gave us thirst and hunger to say, you need water, mm -hmm. you need yeah. food. And um, the cl complex system that God put together so that our physical life can be sustainable um, is such a beautiful picture of the same thing that our soul needs. Mm -hmm. Our soul has triggers that are just like soul hunger pains. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that I think awakens in Josiah is, wow, I've been hungry for this wow. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And we know when we experience physical hunger that physical food can only reach the depth of our stomach yeah. because mm -hmm. physical food is meant to satisfy the stomach. But it's God's word that is hand designed to be the nourishment for our soul. Mm -hmm. And we've gone a really long time without physical food yeah. and without water. You know, you know what it does to the physical body. I think the soul is the same okay. way. Yeah. When you go a really long time without really taking in the spiritual nourishment that God has given us to help us be sustained spiritually, um, and I think you, when you find it and, and you get into God's yeah. word and you start taking it in, it starts to nourish your soul and it starts to give you a different kind of perspective and energy in your life. I think it is so mm -hmm. profound. And I think we see in this week's lesson the incredible gift it is that unlike back in the times of the kings, we have access to God's word all of the time. Yeah. And I think how many times have I caught myself saying, I have to read my Bible, like mm. as if it's just this thing on uh -huh. my to-do list. When in reality, I think we should say, how amazing wow. that we live in a day yeah. and a time where God's word is so accessible yeah. that I get the gift of his word mm -hmm. that my soul is so hungry for and I can get into his word and let it get into me and let it sustain me on a deep profound level and I also like this principle of what we see that the kings are supposed to do keep God's word close yeah uh, keep it right there on your bed. So mm -hmm. if you have times of fear, you have times of anxiety, you have times of questions or whatever, make sure that it's God's word that we're turning to. And that's why I love online Bible study so much yeah. because I think it is a way for us to gather together and um, start to get in parts of the Bible that maybe we haven't before, mm -hmm. such as First and Second Kings. Yeah. And there are some really profound lessons that I think our soul needs to be reminded of and nourished by. And it's not just enough to read the word. Yeah. We've got to write it out. We've got to journal it. You know, just do whatever we can do to start internalizing it so that it really impacts us in the way that we live and so that our soul doesn't feel so desperate. Have you ever been on a diet and um, it's like yes. all of a sudden you're super, super hungry and somebody puts a plate of your favorite food in front of you that maybe you're not supposed mm -hmm. to have on your like diet kettle or cooked whatever? Chips. Okay, kettle cooked <laughs> chips. Yeah, so rude when that happens. So it makes it that much harder to say no oh, yeah. to those chips if you're really walking around in a state of desperation because you're super hungry, right? Mm -hmm. However, if you've just eaten a wonderfully nourishing salad and you're full and somebody puts the chips in front of you, you may still want one or two, but right. you don't want to just devour the whole plate. Very true. I think desperation is a very important thing that we pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the gift of getting into God's word every day so that the more spiritually nourished we are, the more nourishment that our soul is, the more full of truth that our soul is, the less desperate we will feel to reach for those things that, um, that God says, don't reach for that. Yeah, that's, that's not my good. best. And so I think this week's lesson is yeah. so profound yeah, and so, so relevant to right. our lives as well. I like thinking of Josiah when he finds the, the book of the law, is that how mm -hmm. you say it? Yeah, the book of the law, and when he reads it for the first time and like what might be going on in his mind and in his soul, and it just rejuvenates and revives him in a way that changes the trajectory of 
of the people. I mean, he is so, he, I don't want to give too much away, but I mean, he is so just mesmerized by what's happening and yeah. so convicted that he literally sends them out and, go, and says, you have to find the closest person who can interpret what's actually taking place. Wow. And it's a prophetess that he goes to. And we meet another uncanny woman who's just right there, who's being obedient. And I just think about her. Like, imagine you have to now give wow. kind of the consequence of what this means. And you can maybe say exactly what God mm -hmm. says or maybe not. And you're talking to the king. Yeah. And she's just, again, another evidence of a woman who's so faithful wow. um, to clearly declare the word of God. Well, you guys made me excited to dive into week five. And like Lisa has mentioned, the word nourishes your soul. And we know that here. And we know that to be true at Proverbs 31 Ministries. Because we know when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Bye, y'all.